Good evening, friends. Thank you for being here. As we begin the season of Lent, let us turn inward and tune our hearts. Before an orchestra plays together, they must all tune their instruments. The cacophony of this process may be very loud and create a lot of dissonance, but it's a necessary step in the process of creating harmonies and melodies. And so this Lent, let us ask ourselves, how can we tune the instrument of our hearts so that they align with God? I'm going to do a reflection piece. It's called Beloved is Where We Begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what this journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger, from fear, from hunger or thirst, from the scorching of sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path, there will be help. I can tell you that on this way, there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us, bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence, whisper our name, Beloved, Beloved, Beloved. And now let us join together in singing our opening hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
please be seated. And now I invite you to settle into your seat and close your eyes and imagine a place that brings you comfort and peace. Breathe in the goodness of that space. Breathe forth the goodness of that space. Breathe forth the goodness that is within you. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Amen. Will you please join me in our collect prayer? Open now our ears, O oh God, that we might hear your word. Open now our minds, O oh God, that we might receive your word. Open now our hearts, O oh God, that we might receive your word and make it the rule for our lives. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 51, verses 1 through 17. Hear now the reading of the word. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. 
Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Three weeks ago, I got to do something for the first time in my entire life. I got to have my grandkids stay with me for a couple of days without mom and dad. I had all kinds of plans for all sorts of wonderful things that we would do together. But as it turned out, Mother Nature had already reserved those days for an ice storm, (laughs) which meant we remained at home and indoors for the entire time they were here, except for the brief 30 minutes or so that we spent outside building a miniature snowman. We played a lot of checkers. We did arts and crafts. We told stories. We looked at photos. And the snowman wasn't bad at all once you figured out where it was. But by the second day, cabin fever was definitely settling in. And we ended up doing the one thing I really did not want to do. We turned on the TV. For a Pokemon marathon that would run almost nonstop for two entire days. It was needed and necessary, but I absolutely had not wanted to turn on the TV while they were here because spending time with my grandkids is precious to me. And it is also some of the most important and sacred work that I will ever do. Because sharing myself with them and giving them memories of me gives them a sense of place in the universe. It gives them knowledge of who they are and where they came from, not to mention who is responsible for their stubby little noses. And while they may not recognize it yet, spending time with them is the greatest gift that I have to offer. It is the purest expression of love I could possibly lay at their feet. In fact, time is the greatest gift that we have to offer to anyone. Because not only is the amount of time we've been given finite, but we also don't even know how much there is to spend. The measure given is not the same for everybody. However we choose to spend our time, we are drawing from an unknown balance and no one knows for sure what their balance is. None of us know how much sand we have left in our hourglass. The only thing we know for sure is that it will run out, probably without warning, and that will be it. And here's what's really interesting. Out of all the creatures that inhabit creation, humans are the only species that live their lives knowing all of this. We are the only species to think about death, to dwell on death, to fixate on death, to run from death, to hide from death. 
because we are the only creatures who know that all of creation is made up of the stuff of the earth, that we were brought forth out of the dirt or dust of the earth, and that when our life on this earth is over, we shall return to dust. And that makes us very uncomfortable. In fact, we are so uncomfortable talking about it, we don't even like using the word dead when we're talking about someone who's dead. We're more apt to say they passed away, or they expired, or they went to be with Jesus. But you don't just come right out and say that they're dead because that would be bad form. Even our funerals have become celebrations of life. I mean, why not have celebrations of death? We were celebrated at birth. Why can't we be celebrated at death? It's the next phase of our spiritual journey, after all. And to me, that's cause for celebration. No more student loans, you know? <laughs> <coughs> But we don't like the idea of death, not one bit, especially the idea of our own death. And because we don't like the idea of death, we put a tremendous amount of time and energy into distracting ourselves from the reality of it. Time and energy that we could be putting into our grandchildren or our children or our family and friends or even, God forbid, ourselves multitasking, internet browsing, social media addiction, smartphones, laptops, video games, Netflix, binge watching, sports, alcohol, drugs, and so much more than I have time to name here tonight. Have you ever observed a family seated in a restaurant? Half the time, every single one of them will be glued to their devices unless they're too young in which case you see them frantically trying to capture the attention of the rest of the family who are all mesmerized by their devices. Time is the greatest gift that we have to offer to anyone, but it doesn't mean much if we're distracted. Distracting ourselves is not a new thing. Blaise Pascal had a lot to say about his observations of the diversions that kept people distracted during the 17th century in France. He wrote about how diversion consoles us, how it distracts us from thinking about things we don't understand, like death or misery or perplexity making it easy to pretend like those things don't even exist. The diversions of his time were different, but the human psychology was the same. He wrote, despite his afflictions, man wants to be happy, only wants to be happy, and cannot help but wanting to be happy. But how shall he go about it? The best thing would be to make himself immortal, but as he cannot do that, he has decided to stop thinking about it. So, in a nutshell, we have learned how to become oblivious to our own impending oblivion. But here's the deal. When we numb ourselves to the things we don't want to face, we numb ourselves to everything. And when we numb ourselves to everything, we forget that we are a part of something so much bigger than our minds can grasp. So tonight, we rub ashes on our foreheads to remind ourselves of a very simple and basic truth. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. We will die. We are mortal beings. Our lives will end. None of us know when or where or how, and that is exactly as it should be. <clears throat> These ashes are not demonstrations of our faith. They're not something required by or even desired by God, and hopefully we're not trying to show God or anyone else how faithful we are by wearing ashes on our forehead because these ashes are not for God. They are for us to remind us of our fragility and to confront us with our own tendency to live unconsciously. Life is short, 
and fleeting. And tonight, the ancient truth of our reality infuses our ritual as we remember the dust from which we came, celebrate the dust that we are, and declare the reality of the dust to which we shall return. Tonight, we remind ourselves to embrace the beauty and promise of each passing moment while trusting that the love that lies at the heart of everything will not abandon us to the abyss of nothingness. Tonight, we hold up the reality of our own death and the death of those we love as we summon up the courage to enter the mystery of what lies beyond the dust. Tonight is our wake-up call. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Let the memory of your incomplete humanity awaken you to the wonders, joys, sorrows, and pains of life. Because life is for the living, this is eternity right here, right now. So let the ashes we receive be the ashes of transformation, of awakening to the beauty and seizing the moment and living it to its fullest. And let it be said of you that here in this little part of eternity, you gave freely the gift of time and attention, that you lived fully, loved extravagantly, and you helped humanity evolve into all that God dreamed that we can be. God's blessing be upon you this night and this season, and may it be with you all according to God's word. Amen. And now we will rise together and join in singing, Be Still My Soul.
Lent is a time for us to return to our creator who formed us from the dust of the earth. Our lives are finite, so we want to spend every precious moment in tune with God, living whole, abundant lives, the kind of lives we were created to lead. And so in recognition of our origins in the earth, in acknowledgement of our finite days, we come to receive ashes and remember, dust we are and to dust we shall return. At this time, you will be invited to come forward and receive your ashes. I will make a cross of ashes on your forehead, or if you would prefer, I can also do them on your hand. Just hold up your hand if that's what you would prefer. And I've got a Taze chant that I'm going to play while we do it.
Will you please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving? Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we will join together in our closing hymn, How Deep the Silence of the Soul. I promise never to use that font again. <laughs> it looks so good at home. Will you please join me in our closing prayer? Oh Lord, may I so live that those who know me and know not thee may want to know thee because they know me. Amen. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, take heart, it is I, be not afraid. You are blessed you are called. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go, trusting that good news. Amen.